this is Ben Kant from 19376 Thermal Equilibrium, and this is a tutorial on how to accomplish PID control in FTC. So PID control is a technique that allows us to very accurately drive our motors or other devices to uh, very accurate positions. It accomplishes this by subtracting where we are from where we want to be, and then using just a little bit of math to calculate the current appropriate motor power to minimize the error between those two. Um, so to start, we're going to make a new um, a new op mode. I have a few links in the description where you can learn how to do FTC programming, and those will help you a lot with this. All right. Um, the way we're gonna do this today is not going to necessarily have the best class structure. I would recommend using the uh, object-oriented programming paradigms. What we're, we're just gonna do for now is just import a few things, create, a, create our DC motor object, The reason I'm using DC Motor Extended EX instead of the normal DC Motor class is just because DC Motor Extended has better features for doing things like accessing the velocity of the motor. Um, and so here in our run loop, we can do things like setting the motor power. So here, this will just set the motor power to zero, 100%, negative 100%, etc. So what we want to do is we now want to write some log. Uh, we now want to write our controller. Um, so let's go ahead and create a new method. So public double PID control. Um, I would per so if I was doing this for your actual robot project, I would personally abstract out your PID controller into an own class, and then have an instance of the PID controller for each op for each device you're trying to control. Um, that'll make things a lot cleaner. Um, so for so for now, we're just going to implement the basic PID controller that you can find on controlftc.com. Uh, we're not going to look at any of the enhancements just yet. Um, so first of all, let's calculate our error. Excuse me. Let's, cal let's calculate our error. Um, so we can do reference minus our state. Um, our integral sum. And then let's do that. Should... Some of these need to persist. Um, zero double k i equals zero double k d equals zero. So our integral sum needs to be uh, is going to be repeatedly added to, and so we don't want this value to reset between method calls. Um, so we're just going to store this. Um, this is one of the reasons why I recommend that class structure from beforehand. Um, here we have our proportional term, our integral term, and our derivative term, and these are just the coefficients that we tune whenever we say we're tuning our PID controller. Wonderful. Um, we're also going to use the elapsed timer class. Um, this allows us to do, or it, this makes it really convenient to do our derivative and integral calculation. Um, so yeah. Um, all right. So we can say our integral sum plus equals our error times timer dot seconds. Perfect. Um, and then finally, our derivative or our very ugly approximation of derivative is equal to error last error divided by timer dot seconds. And then so let's create a field last error, set that equal to zero. And then finally, all right. So now we're doing the uh, error, the integral and the derivative calculations. And so finally, we can c calculate our, out our summed output by doing uh, error times kp plus uh, derivative times kd plus integral wait plus in plus integral sum times ki. Okay, perfect. And finally, we'll return our output. So then what we can do is we can take our wonderful motor, set power, and then just set its power to the PID con whoops, the PID control of our target. So let's say we want to go to 100, uh, we want to go like 100 encoder takes forward. 
And then our current system state is just the encoder position. And actually, let's put this into a variable just to make this easy. Perfect. All right. So every so this loop is going to continually run forever. And what's going to happen is as long as we tune KP, KI, and KD appropriately, um, our PID controller will uh, make our motor's position converge on, in this case, 100. Um, this would be something that you change and you probably want to have a, a more clean way to deal with this. Um, so yeah, um, another thing you can do is you can also do, uh, you, you, you can also make this a velocity controller. So like here, uh, this will make our, assuming we tune our KP, KI, and KD coefficients correctly, this will make our motor spin up to about a thousand ticks per second. Um, the one thing that we also want to do is we want to set our uh, mode to run without encoder. This is very counterintuitive, but what this does is makes it so that whenever we're doing our set power, um, it's it's not using feedback on the set power. Set power is just doing a raw motor output, where if you did run with encoder, it would try to go to a desired speed. The disadvantage with that is uh, run with encoder or run using encoder um, limits our motor to about 80% of its maximum power, um, which is not necessarily desirable when we're trying to eke out all the performance we can. Um, so I'll show you a couple things here. So um, to tune this controller, um, we can use a couple of the techniques on control all FTC. We'll just show uh, off the, uh, the basic um, manual tuning method. So we'll start with tuning our proportional term until this response looks right. Then we'll increase our integral term until uh, we get low steady state error. And finally, we'll add derivative to dampen out the oscillations. Specifically for velocity control systems, one thing that we one thing that we can often do is add one or more feed forward controllers. So if we go up here and we add a new gain KF, which just stands for K, uh, K feed forward, what we can do is we can do uh, reference times KF. And so if you start by setting all of the, everything to zero and then just increasing KF um, until you roughly match the velocity. Uh, this will make your velocity PID control once you tune KP, KI, and KD a lot more reliable. Um, as with always, if you would like to learn more about FTC control theory, you can check out the description for controllftc.com. This has a lot more uh, techniques that will be shown soon on this YouTube channel, including things like the common filter and full state feedback control.